Hi everyone, a very very pleasant good evening. Ajay, Dolly, Kirtana, Ananta, Akshat, Akshat, everyone. You there? Yes, no, sleeping. Rakshit, good evening. Chalo, ito ayo. Others? Ajay, good evening. Akshat, good evening. I need a good evening from everyone. I need to know that. Okay, you are in office. Okay. Okay. Great, great. So, guys, let's not uh, make it a very one way interaction. Okay, I think most of you are there. Great, great. So, any idea what is the purpose of this meeting? Or you have came blank? Nothing at all. Any idea why we are meeting? What is the agenda? Yes, Abhishek, you want to say something? Exam prep says Ajay, Akshat. Exam prep. Now, many of you, uh, you might be wondering that we have just started with CMA qualification and we are not yet done with our syllabus, not in fact 10% of it. And why we are talking about exam prep so soon. So see, the idea is no matter how good the faculty is, no matter how good the student is, if we are not very much familiar the way exam is conducted, you know, we can't assure the success. And I can give you a very good example, very classic example, and a very recent example, where the student who was getting, you know, 90, 90%, 85% score in the mock, but still in the exam, for some reason, he didn't clear. And we were trying to understand that what could be the possibilities, where he went wrong. Okay. And the conclusion was that we were not able to understand the exam type, the question very properly. Okay. And with that, we got the idea that let's keep a very formal session on this to understand that how exactly CMA exams are conducted. Yeah. And for that, we have a very special guest with us today. So please welcome Mr. Ronak. So Mr. Ronak is himself CMA qualified who has more than 16 years of versatile experience across business development, finance, marketing, sales, and that will do multiple you know, different kinds of industry like manufacturing, IT, financial consultancy, and education. He has been a seasoned senior leader in education development business. And he brings a wealth of experience and a proven track record of success in driving growth and innovation within the education sector. He excels in budgeting, forecasting, stakeholder management, and fostering business growth. His expertise spans a wide range of areas, including market analysis, product development, client relationship management, and strategic planning. Right now, he's working with Hawk International. You all might have heard about Hawk International. You're using their content. So uh, he worked over there as business relationship director and he has been instrumental in developing and growing sustaining relationship with course provider, universities, corporations, professional bodies, academic communities, government bodies, and so on. With a passion for innovation and a commitment to excellence, he is dedicated to driving positive change within the education sector and helping to shape the future of learning. And he has given his very, very important time. So thank you so much, Ronak, and we are pleased to have you. Now, please, if you can, you know, help us to understand this exam structure of CMA in a better way. It will be grateful. All over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Abhishek, for the warm introduction. And good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out and uh, being part of this webinar. So I hope that by the time our, our closure happens for the call, we you would have some takeaways. And I'm sure you'll have some takeaways and practical takeaways for your exam preparation and also uh, how to appear in the exam. So I today would not be talking about uh, anything special except my student journey. So I would talk to you as a student because I've been through your journey. I had a lot of questions before I started during my preparation, etc. There were certain, uh, uh, what do you call it, some challenges that I faced and the ways I worked which were not in my favor and then I devise something different, strategize differently and try to accomplish my goals, etc. So I'll, I'll share that journey with you, my student journey. 
so i started with uh, with my early career about 12 13 years of experience i already had in sales and business development then i realized that i do not have a a global professional qualification on my resume i had qualifications but they were not globally recognized so the f- reason why the first and most foremost reason i started was to have a global certification then i started checking in the market which would be the relevant certification for me and somehow i zeroed upon uscma i was told that there are only two papers it's easy to clear so i said okay i don't have much time i will i'm a working professional family child house parents everybody is there along with work so i don't want to go for something where there are a lot of papers so two papers is something it was exciting for me i said okay let's start that So I started my journey in February of 2019 with my US CMA. I started with part two first because that's what they, the, the training partner from where I was taking my tuitions, they said that this is the batch we are starting. So why don't you join this one? I said okay. I started off thinking that two papers I'll be able to clear it with uh, you know with ease, and I did not have a finance background. I had my BCom which I had done. and i had 11 12 i had my commerce so there was uh, you know the basics i had done but there was 10 12 years of gap in between which i where i had not upskilled myself so i had completely forgotten even the golden rules i could remember to one i couldn't remember so it was like that bad and the habit of sitting reading etc had completely gone so once i started i realized that i am not able to concentrate for more than 3 to 4 minutes and reading 3 to 4 minutes made me feel that i am reading for like 30 minutes more than 1 hour and i used to feel so tired mentally exhausted and then i realized that you know this is something it's not going to be an easy journey what i had thought and once i started with the us cma qualification i was utterly wrong i had the impression there are two papers i'll be able to do it properly but then once i started i saw that it's it's like a it's like an ocean each part has six competencies that they develop part 1 has six competencies part 2 so if you see there are literally 12 papers is what you're preparing for once i started i realized that in the examination because there is only one examination for each part each part covers the six core competencies in the examination you do not know which portion of those competencies or questions are going to come in the computer i'll share more about that uh, in my later conversation but this was the challenge that i had and once i started i saw that it talks in depth and somebody who is not seriously studying i could only manage time during the weekend because i was working i used to devote a lot of time during my weekend i had to sacrifice couple of years of my family life and uh, recreational life that i used to have because my only goal was to complete the qualification and as a working professional i was sponsoring myself so i wanted to make sure and i had registered as a member uh, like a professional so my fees were also very high i wanted to make sure that whatever money i put in i should not go for a second attempt otherwise that is a loss for me right and as a finance professionals we always try to optimize our costs and you know reduce find ways how to reduce our cost right so i started in february and somewhere around in august i decided okay in october of 2019 is where i would write my first paper so i booked my exam and i paid the full fees what a professional pays and in my tuition the course was done everything was done and i was going through the material everything and i was happy that i am i'm done now let me i have completed the syllabus now let me go ahead with mocks i started writing mocks i gave two mocks and i scored miserably why because why because what the, the biggest problem that i had and i would like to share because you are just in the beginning of the journey it's the right time to the understand the do's and don'ts and you can definitely tweak what works for you but the biggest challenge that i faced as a student is i read some bit from the book some bit from online some bit from the 
tutor sir some i wrote on the notebook and i completed my syllabus at the time of revision i forgot what i studied from where so mm-hmm. my first and foremost learning was that i should have had a one reference point so i booked my exams okay in, in august i scored really bad in my mocks and i was really nervous by the time i realized that i want to change my uh, what do you call it the session you know in the two months you can choose your dates and i had chosen the last week in october so there was no further day that i could postpone my exam and i was really not prepared because this was the problem that i faced i forgot what i read from where so there was no way i was able to uh, do the recap so that was the biggest challenge i had taken two weeks of leave from my office and i i told my manager i was very frank with my manager i told him this is my scenario i have paid the fees good money i have paid i don't know what i have studied from where i have taken the leaves now i'm in a soup i don't know what to do i'm literally shivering and i'm i'm really scared that my money is going down i am not going to write the exam that was my thought that i'll not write then my manager told me that ronak now that you've paid you cannot go ahead with the session you cannot change the session what you can do is you can give it your best shot any which way if you don't write you're going to lose the money if you write till it doesn't make any difference right you rather take it a shot you still have two weeks of time why don't you give it a shot then i asked him what should i do so my manager suggested that first and foremost the biggest challenge that you had is you did not have a reference point so it would be a little challenging for you but write down in a notebook create a notebook and then in the two weeks that you have leave put everything down in that notebook and that should be your reference point so coming to you you should have one reference point no matter what books you have what study material online tuition whatever you support you get is fine but at the end guys as a student what you write in with your own hand is the one that you remember what i decided was i started writing whatever topics i thought is important i started writing down for the first 6 7 days i only spent on writing the notes also the the sums that i thought are important even in the book and what sir was teaching me in the class i went one by one and i wrote down the questions with the solution of that sums in the first one week it was a herculean task for me and you know i i didn't know whether it's going to work or not but i had no other opportunity so i thought this is the best shot let me let me just prepare whatever best and deep down inside guys we all know whether we are studying to show to our parents because when i was young in school i used to just sit with my books just to for my parents to see that i'm studying but deep down my mind my thoughts were wavering i was doing something else so we all know whether we have given a 100% or not right so when you are studying whatever you are studying make sure that you devote proper time to do that and complete that portion no other thing should should bother you at that point in time and because i had put in my own money so my dedication was also a lot more because i knew my dad's not paying i am paying if i don't do this again a big chunk of my salary i have to pay for the exams again which i didn't want so deep down i was sure that i want to clear it so my why was very clear why i wanted to do us cma and uh, i need to clear it in the first shot irrespective so my end goal was clear i want to clear my us cma and in the first attempt that was my goal in between whatever happened the obstacles come for each and every one of us but that's how we have to deal strategize and walk through that so first 7 days i prepared i made my notes and then what i did was i am little like a night person i'm not an early morning person so what i used to do is i used to sleep during the day and write everything in the night same thing i continued for the revision as well for the next 5 days i did the same thing in the day time i was sleeping in the night i was active no sound no disturbance and i was studying after the 12th day i wanted to change my routine so i again tried i slept in the night for the first day got my routine in proper and before the examination date i had booked for the second slot you have two slots in the day that you can book for i mean that was then so i took the later slot because i thought in the morning it is easy that you know i get up 
do a quick revision of the formulas and then go and write the examination so that i was i was writing part 2 so i decided that 8 o'clock in the night whatever it was i stopped i had my food decent food not very spicy that is also very important what you eat before the night of the examination have something like a khichdi or something because i wanted to uh, keep my stomach proper in the morning also i had a good breakfast idli etc whatever you want to eat so that you don't feel hungry but nothing spicy or things like that which you are not very comfortable during the examination because in examination four hours you have to sit right so you have to make sure that you do not eat something which is uh, which would make you unstable or un unsteady during the examination so i went after 8 o'clock i closed my books i spent time with my family relaxed mood listen to some music 10 o'clock in the night i slept i got up at 7 o'clock in the morning again went through the formulas and whatever thing i thought was important just browse through it and went for my examination i was really not sure how it was going to happen but deep down i knew the answer that i gave my 200% in the last two weeks there were certain challenges that i faced and instead of you know shying away and not writing the exam i i faced that and i whatever possible strategy i could have do it with suggestion of my senior and then i prepared and so i was happy that i was prepared for the examination not 100% but something i had i had some ammunition to go and write the examination ियनिटी so you know you get your help from your friends and colleagues etc who was around and even in mba it wasn't that much of pressure so this was the first professional exam i was writing in in my exam so i was under a lot of pressure to to be facing this particular examination guys can i request if if you can go on mute whoever is yeah thank you so i reached the examination now there is a cma handbook if you guys are aware of that or not i'm not sure there is a cma handbook which allows you to see which all calculators and the do's and don'ts of the preparation is given so please download the cma handbook from the ima website and then go through it there are certain number of calculators which are allowed by ima so i had personally taken ba2 plus uh this is uh, this is from technics instrument so i took that and i went in the examination so they search you properly how you are getting searched for when you go to the airport it's like that and then once i entered i saw that everything they keep it outside you cannot take your uh, paper and all that all that is provided to you for scribbling etc so i enter and i see lot of computers are there a lot of folks are there who are writing different exams prometric conducts exams which are of different kinds so somebody is writing uscma somebody is writing gmat somebody is writing ielts something so and so forth so it's nowhere that you know you can see that okay somebody else is also writing the same exam so you get that confidence and they have cameras so whatever preparation you are doing it is all on you you make it or you break it it is all on you nobody is going to help you and this camera and these folks are also roaming around there is no way you can move your head and all so make sure that you go well prepared and focus only on your examination so once i got the seats i sat down now i'll share my examination experience so far i told you the challenges i had for preparing the exam now i reached the center first time i'm writing under tremendous pressure it's the ac is very low it's so freezing and i'm just sitting there little nervous first time writing the exam so once you start the first 10 minutes they they give you the the mock kind of uh, the you know how do you go about writing the examinations what are the features how do you write etc so there's a mock question where you can select questions answers and submit so that you get familiar with that once that is done 
you start the examination so i was done i went through those slides or whatever the screen came up and i started the examination top right hand side 3 hour clock starts you see that clock moving downwards so from 3 hour it started falling down okay it started and the computer throws you 100 questions okay any questions from any section of the part that you are writing it it is not in like it's in part 1 they are not starting with financial reporting and then so on and so forth they'll start with anything 100 questions computer is going to throw at you i started with the first question okay i was excited i started solving my answers were not matching and they say that it it should be one and a half hours uh one and a half minutes per question what i may say for writing these 100 questions one and a half minutes per question first question only it took me 5 minutes and my answers whatever i was trying to bring it none of them were on the on the screen i said okay i skipped and i moved to the next one similarly 20 minutes into the examination i have attempted around 5 to 7 questions and none of the answers i got can you imagine my situation i was shivering i was sweating i had palpitation in freezing cold and i didn't know what to do and i was like one and a half minutes they say 20 minutes i'm already through the timer is going down and i'm not able to solve even one one answer is also not matching from one of the four options what do i select i was really nervous i thought that i'm done i'm not going to clear I'm going to fail that was my thought so i'm talking as a student this was my thought my situation 20 minutes no uh, no answers matching i thought i'm going to flunk done and dusted then i again spoke to my you know these pep talk self talk you should do with you all the time because external motivation is fine but unless you talk to yourself and internally you are motivated you would not be able to get through these professional exams there are a lot of times that you will have those low period wherein you you'll think you'll feel that you know it's not for me i'm not able to do it but that pep talk really helped me so i can suggest you guys to have that pep talk internal motivation works best so i decided that okay uh let me have a sip of water i closed my eyes for 30 seconds and i decided up what we indians normally do jo hoga dekha jayega that kind right because there's nothing i could lose right any which way if i don't write i just move out i'm going to fail and uh, my money is wasted so i thought okay what should i do now i decided i'll see the question this is very practical guys make note of this this may help you i decided that i'll see the question if it appears to be difficult i'll flag it and i'll move to the next question i don't even try to solve it i'll see it's a big question difficult appears difficult i'll flag it and i'll move this is something i developed that strategy for myself during the examination and after that i saw this question i flagged it moved it to the next one after two three questions i saw some easy questions coming in which i was able to answer that is when things started to change for me i started gaining that confidence and i started the later questions were little easy so i started answering those i wanted to make sure that at least what i know out of those 100 questions i should make sure that i get those right and come to the difficult questions later so while you are writing uh, there is a flag option that you get during the examination okay you flag that question and then you move forward so this is something i did so that i can review that later after certain times i saw that uh, there were like about 10 15 minutes left and ha- i had about uh, 25 to 30 questions which i had flagged okay now i decided that okay now less time is there what do i do i can either try solving some of those questions or I, and i may get it right may not get it right but i was very sure that i wanted to answer all because there is no negative marking like cat there is no negative marking so make sure that when you are writing the examination you should have that thought process that i should answer all the questions right or wrong is secondary but you should attempt all questions because if you don't attempt that is any which way zero so make sure that you attempt the questions so 15 minutes left i have 25 30 questions left i decided that okay now what do i do i can answer five six questions maybe right maybe not right and the rest would go so i decided 
I'll see the question, see the numbers, and then see the answers that are given. This is again a very practical trick. You should practice that as well when you are preparing. This would help you somewhere down the line when you don't know the answer to that question. So I saw the numbers, whether they are odd or even, and then I saw the options that were given. And accordingly, I took my guesswork. So while I was practicing as well, writing the mocks and preparing for myself as well, somewhere the questions that I did not know the answer, before I could see the answer or how it was solved, I always tried to see whether if I guess this question or answer, what would be the answer to that? And then once you start doing that, you know, six out of 10 times you get that right. It is not the right way, but then there would be certain questions which you don't know the answer for. Even during the examination, you get nervous, the answer is not coming or something or the other. So this is where this would help you to see the question, look at the answers, which one is the closest match, you take that chance as a fluke. So I did that. And a one minute left, I completed, I saw that nothing is flagged, all the questions I've answered. I decided that, okay. I'm done. I don't think the next essay window is going to open for me. So I clicked submit and I was just packing my stuff and I was planning to get up. And then all of a sudden I realized that the essay portion opened. I cannot tell you the excitement and happiness I had because at least I knew that 50% of the 100 questions I had answered it correctly. I still have a chance. The essay, once the essay has opened, for the essay, you have two essay questions and you have one hour. So I was sure that at least 50% have completed correctly the answers in the MCQs. I still got a chance. So that excitement and motivation made me focus on the, uh, the second part. So in this, they had two essay questions. One was like a, a case study where you uh, whatever you have learned in that particular part, be it part one or part two, all that combined, they give in a case study and then they have like five, six questions that you have to answer all in the computer. Okay. So you practice on the computer when you are writing and it's like an Excel with very less features of Excel, not all the features, but you have to type it in. So you practice that as well. So I started answering those questions. I finished that and I answered the second one and I clicked submit. Examination got over. I was mentally exhausted. Four hours, you know, I did not have the habit. So my suggestion is when you are practicing mocks, you please go to the center, your tuition center and sit there with your computer and write the examination as you are writing the proper examination, the final examination, because you need to have that habit of sitting for four hours continuously. We don't have that habit with concentration. So that is something that gets developed when you write mocks in a proper examination uh, scenario at the center. So you can ask a particular date is decided. All of you students go to the center with your laptop or on the PC, whatever is available. And you write the examination with the timer. If you do for two hours, two and a half hours, if you don't have that max during the examination, you'll definitely have challenge because four hours continuously would not be able to sit. You're not mentally prepared. So this examination, personally, I feel more than the competencies, the learning that you do, which you will eventually do. It is all about mental, how strong mentally you are prepared to write the examination. Because that is where they test. Because see, as a CFO or whoever, once you grow in your life, you become the senior director, CFO. CFO, once he enters the office, you do not expect that, okay, you will get one question on, on uh, costing. From, from the costing department. One you'll get from your manufacturing uh, unit that said this problem has happened. So one after one HR problem would happen. One uh, ethics or policy matter would come to the CFO. So it is not pre-planned, right? Just the way the examination is conducted. They teach you the, the CMA examination tests you on that same manner as well. They keep throwing questions one after the other. In, instead of uh, from one particular chapter. That is why this is more, uh, you know, extensive. And if you are writing the CMA examination, the value that you bring to the table is much more. Because you are all prepared in any scenario. 
because there are a lot of other bodies and examination which is conducted where you are writing only one particular topic so your mind is attuned to one that topic itself so it does not test you real life scenarios here you are tested real life scenarios how a cfo gets these problems similarly in the examination also you get those challenges one question after the uh, after the other so once i completed that i my i was planning to just wait for my examination results to come it came out in december until then i said i am not writing part one because i am not sure whether i'll clear or not but i remember i was on at my brother's wedding on 12th of december in the night i got this email and it started with congratulations and so on and so forth and you have cleared the examination i cannot tell you how happy i was before that i was not enjoying his marriage but right after that i i think i have never danced like that before in my life ever and thankfully i just got 360 i just skipped through so can you imagine two weeks before the examination i was in this scenario where i didn't want to write the examination some strategies with my seniors i discussed and i planned put in that effort deep down i was sure i gave my 200% come what the result i know that i i was i was i did justice to my preparation so that is something i expect you guys as also to do it don't do if somebody i mean don't write the exam or don't pursue a qualification if somebody else is forcing you to you will not be able to clear it i'm telling you upfront until unless your why is clear why you want to do it and this is the right time that you've chosen a very good qualification because this is one call 12 years i was working in sales after i completed my us cma i got a direct opportunity with ntd data you can check on my linkedin as well i worked with ntd data and they hired me as an associate director fpna i was doing financial planning and analysis role it was a very senior role and a big us based uh, business which was globally present i was the finance controller for that doing the reporting doing the budgeting forecasting everything and it was only possible because of the us cma qualification prior to that i had no experience so everybody was surprised that even not having prior experience in finance how did you land up in a in a good job with like with a company like ntt data it's not a small organization right so it was because of this qualification so i have that strong conviction and belief in that qualification the skill set that this qualification provides so i would strongly recommend all of you to give in your 100% and write the examination but after i wrote my examination one year i was in my procrastination period i was like okay i have completed my examination now i want to rest one year i did not prepare did not write the examination that was again a big mistake that i did because for me the time never came when i was 100% prepared then i realized that in my first examination how it worked in my favor is i booked the examination once i paid the money i knew that it's going to get wasted so reverse calculation i started preparing for the examination and that's how i started writing for part preparing for part 1 after that and i cleared in the first attempt so i was happy that i cleared my exams in the first attempt got this role with ntd data two years i worked there then i realized that i'm i'm more of a front ending person but that knowledge is really helping me us cma qualification has really helped me with my personal finances as well as well as to the organization that i work for so i can guarantee you that you have taken a very right uh, program you have the right training partner tutors who are who are the best in the industry the supportive the supportive and the teaching pattern is exten- extensively uh, good you are using hawk material which is also a globally acclaimed content brand hawk videos are you know uh, the content and brand has created is very user friendly please go through that in that also you have something called like a paths map wherein you can select the date when you want to write the examination and then what pass map does is it calculates how much time every week you should devote in order to be ready for the examination and then at the end you have two mock exams we should you should write you should not touch the mock exams because these are unique questions and i would insist that you write the mock exams uh in the center you go to the center 
write in a proper four hour examination center and take these mocks all the mcqs and uh, test banks that you have those questions in the mocks are unique so that is where you'll absolutely see what you score if you're scoring 70 80% you are prepared for the examination and if you are able to score that in mock mocks i can guarantee you that you will you will definitely clear the examination with good marks so i'll take a pause here now if you have any questions or you want me to highlight something specific i didn't want to speak to you technically because i wanted to share my journey with you as a student the challenges that i face and i'm sure most of you somewhere or the other would be facing that challenge as well if you can find any takeaways from that i'll be happy to uh, i'll be happy that i could add some value but uh, i'm open to your questions or back to you animesh uh, if there are any questions for me thank you uh guys any question that you have anyone oh uh, yes sir i have one question yes yes sir yes uh, hello ronak this is karan here uh, uh one thing i wanted to ask like uh, as you said the cma uh, portion is uh, vast and uh, the part 1 also is a uh, very difficult to clear out so as you go on my, what my problem is like if i start from like chapter 1 and i go mm. beyond uh, like chapter 2 chapter 3 then what i read in the chapter 1 again you i have to like a review uh, so You'll like forget. how yes. yeah so how do you cope up with that and be ready like totally the book you have it in your mind and you go to the exam i tell you so hey it is but natural it happened with me it happens with everybody because it is quite detailed right the qualification because it's globally tested it is quite detailed and once you start understanding the concepts that's why i'm saying you make your own notes from the very beginning have okay. your own reference point whatever important you feel you have it on that note notebook that you have if you do this is a very basic step but if you do this once you are writing the exam before that when you do the revision you'll you'll thank me that you know this is something that was told to me and it is really helpful you don't have to move around here and there this is one second is whenever you are moving to the next topic okay you are any which way studying focus is there but go back and pick from the test bank just select any five topics that you want to do five ten questions and try to solve that if you are able to solve that you would see that you are still remembering that and if you are not able to do it in in the hawk material the explanation is also given that why this is right this is right this is right or this is wrong all that is given that is how you'll you'll keep moving forward and you'll remember that then again you move to the topic you take three questions from the first topic more from the second topic and that's how you uh, do those uh, mcqs i'm not saying overwhelm you overwhelm yourself with like 50 questions take 15 to 20 questions only or 10 questions start off with 10 questions and gradually once you are able to answer you will feel that confidence and you like yourself to solve more questions then you will only increase your questions of doing these uh, random questions from these questions just pick those questions answer that that is the only way you will be able to stay in touch and once you complete the entire syllabus revision is most important with your own reference book with sir with your online classes whatever you're doing with hawk material everything that revision is very important but you should also have everything on your reference copy so that you don't have to look at 10 different places what challenge i face some from the book some from online material some from here some from there and i forgot what i studied from where so make sure you have that reference point does that answer your question Oh uh, yes yes definitely and uh, another thing like uh, you said you pre- you were preparing while you were working so i'm also yeah. working and uh, okay. studying as well so but sometimes like there's too much work we have to uh, work for a longer hours so how do you balance I understand. work than working professional you have to work there is no way about that right so your yeah. priority you have to give to that work because that would sustain you in the in the long run right at the same time you have decided to do the qualification up skill so that it helps you to grow in your career further right so what brand suggests is you know to make things simpler you decide the days and the time when you want to study i personally avoided weekdays 
because i knew that work is going to happen and i would not be able to do it so probably instead of studying i used to just solve five ten questions in the evening while i was uh, you know after i was relaxing and all that ten questions i used to solve before going to bed of the previous chapters that i had studied over the weekend i had this time table that two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening i am going to study and in between that i'll give time to whatever i want to do so that i i don't miss out on anything and mentally i'm not strained the biggest exhaustion happens because all the time if you're studying no nothing uh-huh. is going in your head and nothing you will be able to retain so yes. have a dedicated time like 10 to 12 i'll study and 4 to 6 i'll study before and after it's family time or you want to go out so do that as well but during this time no phones no nothing lock yourself in the room no botheration tell your family that two years you have to one and a half two years whatever time you take you have to you know bear with me for this but this would definitely give you good benefits in the long run so if you can do that so you have your day planned right weekend this time to this time only books no whatsapp no instagram nothing just studies so that helped me and i saw that brand also recommends that so that is something you can practice okay thank you thank you very much so sir i have a question yes um, hello yeah i can hear you so i was a working profession okay so, so uh, i have taken a part one so in that okay. uh, i faces uh, the two uh, two steps uh, relating to internal control and data analytics Mm-hmm. those are basically theory right so yeah how do you suggest to prepare them especially because uh, i find it difficult to even take notes for them sometimes because see i'll tell too... you it is too exhaustive i understand that when i was also doing so what i did was i made my own note i did the topic and point wise i just wrote what all it covers so in if it comes in the examination i just have those big topics which i can explain like what are the ways that you do it and in brief two lines that this is this this is this this is this then we are good we are matured enough to explain what the concept is once you understand that don't write the entire para or try to mug up the entire para cma does not test you on your memory skill they test you how practically you can answer or you know take that decision so my personally suggestion what worked for me as well is i just wrote those topics with the broad headers two lines what it is what it is so that i just see okay i know what it is in theory i can write in my own words things like that so you will definitely get marks i can tell you that much and uh, we have this uh, step by step program right in hawk so yes. how far that beneficial for us step by step program in hawk yeah yeah so uh, if you follow you that know? entirely it would tell you what all you need to study right but i'm yes. telling you apart from that you cannot only bank on hawk material or tuition at the end separately you have to put in that extra effort as well so hawk material is good tuition is fine but unless you do your own writing and prepare your own notes because we are most used to our own handwriting right and we know what we wrote this and whenever you see that topic in the mind you'll see that okay this is something i wrote in the page this page this is what it was that's how it worked for me so i would advise you that you get in that habit of making your own notes as well whatever best you find follow the hawk pattern what is there solve the questions but at the same time make your own notes uh, how many marks should we give ideally before it see there is no ideal mock number but i think at least uh three mocks you should write and no mocks before like two to three weeks before the examination i would not suggest any mocks because that made me nervous i wrote mocks before that so once you prepare you plan for mocks every week if you want to write four mocks okay one one week after the other and then you see where you are not scoring well and then you improve on that portion at least two weeks before the examination don't write mocks it used to make me nervous so i would not recommend anybody whatever mocks you want to write plan it out in the manner that two weeks before the exam you are done with the mocks 
you know what your weakness is and you prepare for that thank you would they provide papers for a yeah yeah they provide they provide you with uh, paper and uh, pencil i think pencil or pen whatever but they provide so for your scribbling and all that so you leave it then you cannot take it outside once you're done with the examination just leave it there and and then go there's one more question in the chat box how many okay. questions can we expect for uh, practical and theory uh practical and theory so like i said 100 questions is there in the mcqs once you clear that 50% should be right you move to the next level and then there there are two uh uh essay questions one is more theoretical and one is like uh, a case study and then questions are there then you have to answer those questions i think about 5 to 7 questions were there so one are you get 30 minutes for each essay how you want to plan it out i took like uh, 40 minutes to write one and 20 minutes to write one so that was it but uh, one are you get for the essays uh calculator cma handbook you download it gives a list of the permissible calculators which is allowed so i use texas instrument ba2 plus so that is what i had purchased and i use that you you may have a scientific calculator whichever is comfortable you can check for the calculators which are allowed difference between scaled and raw scores okay see guys this is something what i personally feel is there were scenarios where i wanted to understand and that is what i could find out there's some algorithm that happens at uh, once you write the examination say for example i wrote the examination difficult 100 questions came for me you wrote the examination comparatively the easier questions came up so how do we justify that you know this guy got the easy questions that's why he got higher marks and this guy got difficult so he could not clear or got lower marks so what ima does is after the examination session is done they have an algorithm wherein they try to bring everybody at par somebody who's got difficult questions they increase the uh, the you know the marks for those folks i don't know how they do it but they have some algorithm working and the ones who got easy questions they are brought down so that they all at par and that's how uh, the eventually the marks are the, that that come for the uh, final mcqs that you see so but you make sure that uh, uh, you focus on each and every part properly don't take because 72% guys is the the pass percentage that is required if you think that one portion i leave and i'll write the examination it doesn't work what if the computer throws questions from that section only which you have not done or you have left or you have not prepared properly so make sure that each and every section you are covering up properly and not leaving uh, on that you know last minute or not preparing at all for that section what is the best time to start practicing test bank after doing one section among the six or to practice side by side see test test uh, test bank dolly what you refer is the the mock exam at the end is this what you are asking or Uh, test bank is something that there are set of questions for each and every topic that is covered in the in the hawk mcq questions yes so mcq mcq questions are there after each and every topic that is there right so like i said once what you have studied in the class go back do rev revision try to solve the questions the questions that you are not able to answer come and ask your sir or tutor whoever it is that these are the questions i am not able to understand so i'm sure they will have students in need further support they'll provide extra time or you can again go through the lectures or attend the lecture again and see uh, uh, on that topic and understand which is uh, you know so you get that understanding and uh, yeah so each and every topic covers with those mcq so you can do that afterwards and once you move that one of your colleagues had asked this question that i moved to the next one and i forgot the first one it happened with me as well and it's but natural we are humans we cannot retain everything so whenever you do it take five questions from any of the previous topics take a mix and then try to answer those if you're able to answer you are in touch with that topic and once you are writing the examination you don't know the answer practice what should be the right answer try that fluke as well practice it it worked for me it helps these are very 
practical things that would help you in the examination what helped me to get that 360 because i was not in finance when i started studying because there was a gap i did not know the technical verbiage also in finance so for me to understand all that because my class had a lot of finance folks so when sir used to say i could not register so i had to listen to that video see that video four times to understand that so it was very difficult and also to focus keep my focus in books and studies or whatever i was doing continuously because after five minutes i used to get drained out because i was out of habit so it all took me some time to develop but it really helped so some of the practical challenges that i faced as a student that's why i wanted to speak to you guys as a student and share my student journey any other question guys i'm i'm available on linkedin or wherever you want to connect with me i am happy to you know support any doubt you have any other question Otherwise, guys any more any more question any more doubt So, uh, Rona Prerna, this side, uh, I wanted to know is uh, there any like uh, thing that we should go for the first exam first and then second part later on? It's not related at all. I started with part two because the training partner was starting with part two only. Okay. Both the parts are not related. So, it doesn't matter you do part one first and part two after that or part two first. I did part two because that is what he was starting with. And that was the only option for me. Okay. So they are not related. So don't worry about that. So is there any uh, like time span that we should complete the, the practice within this or like that? See, follow what, what uh, the pass map offers, what your tutor offers, because they, this is not the first time they're doing, they do, they keep doing it. Right. So yeah. they know that, this much time should take for the course to happen whenever they say that, you know, you ideally what worked for me is I had to put in extra effort. So before the next class, whatever topic it was, it was supposed to happen. I used to ask my tutor and I used to just try to go through that from the LMS. Even if I don't understand, at least I go through it and some bit of words and things I could, I could connect to that topic. And when sir started with that topic, I saw that. I was able to connect to that topic and understanding what he had okay. until because before, if I don't go through that, even if I don't understand, just browse through it, I could connect to that topic because when he starts, it is absolutely new. So everything I could not register. So what worked for me is to just uh, glance through the topic before uh, Sir started that and I could connect with that and some things I could not understand. I could tell Sir that Sir, this is what I was trying to understand. And I could not get through. Can you, can you emphasize more on this? Can you repeat that again? So I used to pester him with all that, but it's fine. As a student, we should pester our tutors, right? Yeah. They also love that. Thank you. Which oh, according okay. to you was more tricky part one or part two? See, I think it is not about being tricky. What I saw is, and what they say is part two. Uh, syllabus is little smaller compared to part one. Part one is more elongated, but the trickiness happened with the exam preparation that I was doing. And, you know, I was coming from a old school of thought, how we had studied in school. So I was ex extremely wrong that how we have been studying in school college is entirely different for these professional examinations. You cannot have that mindset because they don't test you on your knowledge or what you can retain unlike what we are used to that you you study you remember and you vomit in the examination and you get marks these professional examination they test you on the applicability on the real life scenario that's why case studies are there how do you perform this is the scenario what is your opinion your opinion could be different from somebody else's right so these are very practical oriented that's why they are very difficult so the tricky part was for me to transition from that mindset to this mindset, if I can put it. That is the trickiest part. So leave how you've been studying from school, college. That's not going to work here. Uh, sir, uh, one last question. Like, how to get through those days where we don't feel like studying? Don't study. 
I'm telling you honestly, if you don't feel like studying, give yourself a guys. We need break, right? You should not be so hard on yourself that if you keep telling no, I want to do it, I want to do it, even if you don't want to do it, it's not going to work. If you feel like you don't want to study, don't study. Relax. Your mind needs that relaxation to prepare for these qualifications. US CMA it appears too, but guys, I know you guys are starting, and you'll as you progress, you'll see that it appears to be easy because there are two papers, but it is very extensive, and it tests you really well in the examination because you don't know what question is going to come from where. That is the most difficult part. That is what. That's why I like this qualification because it prepares you for the real life scenario. In in the real life, also you don't know what challenge is going to come as a CFO to you from which uh, which part, right? It's 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 IT related, policy related, ethics related, cost related, so on and so forth. So I really love the the way the the qualification is structured. All right. Okay, guys. Any more question? Or are we good to go? I think no more questions. I that's that's thank you. Thank you. It's a wonderful session. It was uh, uh, eye opening for many of us, especially since thank we're you. starting at the. Yep. Yep. So. Some things that you can pick from my experience, whatever works. See, not entirely it's going to work for you. So whatever thing you can relate to yourself in your working style or your study style, you can choose that and see if it helps you. But I just wanted to yes, see if I could make a difference and you know share my experience. That's why I wanted to speak to you as a student and share my journey and not as somebody, you know, just give the talk because everybody knows the the broader level. In-depth challenge, ground level challenge. Until as you've gone through as a student, you would not know. So I wanted to share that. ठीक है. So everyone, I think we are good to go. Uh, in case you get any more, you know, questions, feel free to reach out to me. I will, you know, kind of accommodate your questions. If I have the answer, I will answer them. If not, then I will disturb Ronak once again. I will take the answer from him. I will pass it on to you. No yeah. problem. So thank you okay. so much, everyone, for your time. And Rana, on behalf of everyone, I can say that it was a thank very you. fruitful session. Thank you for your thank valuable you. time. Thank you, thank you, Animesh. Thank you, everyone, for your time. And good thank luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.